Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I won't be showing my complete working process, instead I'd like to talk to you about one of the most important mediums we use in doll art, and it's watercolor pencils. It will be the most used to those who have only just begun their journey into doll art and feel overwhelmed when looking at all of the different brands available on the market but also to those people who have only used one brand and wants to see what other options are available out there. In this video I would like to talk about watercolor pencils mostly from the perspective of a doll artist, but I will also provide some general information about this medium and how certain properties of it affect traditional art as well. A little spoiler, not everything that works well on paper is good on dolls and the other way around. And in order to illustrate things in the best way possible, I brought some watercolor paper, two doll heads of completely opposite color, watercolor pencils from four different brands with a diverse price range, and of course some photos and footage of my old projects to show the lessons I've learned in practice along the way. To me, the quality of any pencils stands on three pillars. The first one, very simple, pigmentation. The more pigment you get, the more saturated your drawing and the more vibrant the colors will be. The second one is the hardness of the pencil core. In traditional art, your choice will be defined by the result you want to achieve. If you would like to go for a more watercolor look or even use watercolor pencils to add fine details to your usual watercolor painting, you might want to go for the softer options. But if you want to keep some of that pencil shading to make your drawing look more graphic, it's better to choose harder pencils. In doll art it's a bit different. Harder pencils stay sharp longer and give finer lines, so I would choose them for line work and the soft ones are best used in places where you don't need clear lines, for example to fill the eyes with color. If the pencils are too hard though, they might scratch the sealant and vinyl, so here the best choice would be something medium hard. And the last and most underrated one is the quality of the wood used for the shaft. It not only keeps the core safe, but is also responsible for how much of the pencil you waste when you sharpen it. And it's especially important in doll art, because you always want to keep your pencils as sharp as possible. A little tip. If you are also a Scrooge like me, I recommend to not always use a standard sharpener, but rather sharpen your pencil by rubbing the tip against the paper, if you need to sharpen it a little bit, or use a knife. A knife doesn't break pencils as much as a sharpener, and it also allows you to get the tip super pointy. From what I've seen, I can guarantee that John Wick only sharpens his pencils with a knife. So sharp they are. And for us to see this theory in practice, I brought the pencils from Castle Art, Carandash Supercolor, Faber Castell, and Devent. I will start with Castle Art because they are the cheapest. I've got a set of 120 pencils for 54 euros, and their sets of 24 pencils cost 24 each. They don't sell single pencils, but counting from the small set, it's about 1 euro per pencil. The first thing that hit me in the face when I tried to use them is the quality of wood. I first tested this one dark red pencil and I couldn't sharpen it properly because it kept breaking, until I followed my own tip and used a knife. When I sharpened it, I realized that the half of the pencil is made of good quality wood and the other half was a softer wood and was falling apart. That's why the sharpener was breaking it. Some pencils were okay of course, but some of the others had the opposite problem. For example, this blue pencil had one side that was too hard and it was difficult to sharpen with a knife. So I think they don't really have any quality control for the wood and just use what they have. Or use good wood for one side and shitty wood for another to make it look fine in average. 
I don't have every color from every brand, so I picked the three primary colors and black and white to make the comparison fair, and I'll test them first on watercolor paper. What else I noticed is that these pencils crumble a bit, and it might be dangerous for your painting, because if this dust will land on wet paper, it will activate it and you will end up with stains. And when I activated them with water, it became visible that pigmentation of these pencils is very poor. And it's also quite difficult to get a proper gradient, because the pigments don't spread evenly on paper. I also noticed that the clarity of the colors is not very good either, like yellow looks a bit grayish and the red is a bit pinkish. My guess is that it has the same problem as red eyeshadows from budget brands, like when you start blending them they look more like raspberry, because red eyeshadow is the hardest color to make, and therefore more expensive. The red acrylic paint from Castle Arts, by the way, also suffers the same fate. I also have some footage from when I tried to use them on my actual project, and the pencils were crumbling a lot, and after removing the dust, the pigment was also gone. It didn't bother me too much at first, but it made me really angry when I tried to paint her lips. I wanted to make a gradient from black to purple, and I usually would draw it with pencils and then activate them with water to get a smooth and saturated result. Here, however, the pigment started to disappear as soon as I touched it with a brush, and just like it was on paper, I was not able to get an even layer of paint. If it was just low pigmentation, I still could layer the pencils and slowly get there, but here it was not possible, because the color was patchy. My mistake was that I didn't test them on paper before I used them on the doll, and for me this encounter was a shock. And then I almost ruined the face up while trying to blend her lips and make this layer be at least decent enough for the next layers. My university professor once said that good materials are nothing without skills, but even with a high level of skills you won't be able to draw a masterpiece on office paper. I think it's especially important to know for the beginner artists. Beginners usually feel insecure about their own skills and therefore don't want to invest much money in materials. They want to try a new medium and see what they are capable of. And that's exactly what makes it dangerous, because people who don't know the difference in quality may start to blame the failure on themselves, thinking that they don't have the skills, while it could not be their fault at all. Or they might not see progress in their skills, just because a bad material is pushing them back, but they don't know about it, because they don't have the experience to be able to tell the difference. They compare themselves to other artists and destroy their self-esteem instead. Of course, practice in art is the most important thing, but your life will be way easier if you get good materials. Don't go for the cheapest, get something from the middle, and I promise you will improve way faster. Like even with this face up here, I was able to fix it only after I switched to my old pencils from better brands. I can already predict that there will be comments like, you've got 120 pencils for 60 euros, what did you expect? Well, I did not expect much, but I wanted to see if it can really be a cheaper alternative or not. One can dream, okay? <laughs> but now I can say for sure that they are not suitable for doll art at all, so don't waste your money. However, if you have a kid, I think it would be a really good present for them. Kids don't care about pigmentation and quality, they see 120 colored pencils they can play with, and then you can show them a little magic trick with water as well, and it will keep them busy for a while. I think if I had something like this when I was a child, I would be in heaven. And a little bonus for parents. These pencils can at least partly replace paint, and the kids will leave less mess around the house. It won't save your wallpaper, but at least you might keep your sofa and the carpet. And if you are an artist and don't want your kids to take your expensive pencils, 
you can get them these and trick them into believing that they are better than yours because the box is so big. Well, at least that is what I'm going to do with these pencils. For all of the scenes I listed, they are going straight to her... I mean hands of a nice and sweet kid who likes to draw and will appreciate the gift. So that was it with watercolor pencils from Castle Art. Next, I tested my pencils from Carandash Supercolor because in my memory they were cheaper than the last two brands I've got, but now that I checked again, it turned out that they are our most expensive pencils for today. It looks like they increased prices recently. But anyway, I got a small set of this a long time ago because I remember someone else was really happy with this brand and I wanted to see how they work as well. So all this time I only used this and Faber-Castell and I've got a lot to say. Don't mind the black pencil being so ugly though. It looks like this because sometimes I take the pigment from a pencil directly with a wet brush and then apply it like watercolor. Works really nice as eyeliner for example. But if you look at it carefully, you might notice already that in places where I used it, the pencil looks more grey than black. It happened because pencils from this brand have some white pigment mixed into every color. And that's an interesting feature, by the way, because white base gives lighter colors better coverage. Like for example, when we paint things with acrylic paint, we can mix some white into yellow to give it a better coverage, because yellow paint is usually semi-transparent and doesn't work on darker surfaces. So if you are working on a doll with darker skin tone, it might be really handy. But if you want to use them for traditional watercolor painting, this white pigment is a negative thing, because your art might end up looking dirty. In traditional watercolor painting, the only white color you should have is the paper itself. Note, here I mean western schools, not eastern. Some Asian watercolor brands do have white and pastel colors in watercolor palettes, but that paint has a little bit different texture, like something in between gouache and watercolor, so techniques they use for painting and results they get with that medium would also be different. However, when we paint with watercolor, we want to achieve that lightweight, airy effect with vibrant colors. White in this case would make the painting heavier and muddy. I can imagine that there is some people who know how to use it to their advantage, but I'm sure it's really difficult to pull the trick off. That's why art schools teach you to not use white in your watercolor. Like even now, when I activated this yellow on paper, it looks a bit grayish already. And in doll art as well, I want my black paint and pencils to be actually black, not grey. Like, for example, when I tried to use black pencil from Carandash Supercolor to draw eyeliner on my doll, it ended up looking grey and uneven, compared to the result I've got from using Faber-Castell pencil. As you can see, the technique, the brush, the person who is using it are the same, but the result is different which again proves how much the final result depends on the quality of your medium. And there was another serious issue with these pencils I want to warn you about. These pencils will stay in vinyl, even through several layers of sealant. I first noticed it when I tried to customize Helita last year and wanted to redo her face up, but it turned out I could not redo it anymore because of the stains I've got from the brown pencil. And I also had some stains from the blue pencils when I wanted to redo my Snow White. I only used it on the irises though, so it did not become an issue with her. But still is really unpleasant, especially if you are only learning and have to redo a lot. On paper they look alright though, except for the yellow of course. Pigmentation is better than what Castle Arts has, they are softer and when activated with water they actually look like watercolor. But considering that they are so much more expensive, this result is not impressive at all. Like even today in this video I'll show two other brands that do better and even way better for less money. Like for example my usual watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell. I use them most of the time and don't really have any complaints, they are medium soft and have lots of pigment in them. The only criticism I have is that the white pencils could have better coverage because it's important for the doll's eyes, but for traditional painting white pencil is not really relevant. 
After I finish comparing pencils on paper, we will also have a look how they work on dolls next to each other as well, and I will give my final opinion. For now, I will say that I think that Faber Castell is a brand that's really worth buying because the price and quality are balanced the best here. Goodbye a medium set of Faber Castell pencils and one single white Carandash Super Color pencil, and it will be all you need for doll art. And that's basically what I did, just in my 36 color Faber Castell set I was really missing more brown shades, like there was neither dark brown nor brown in cool undertone, which is important for portraits and face-ups, especially if you like drawing pale people. So for my pale people I had to use the brown from Carandash Super Color, which I didn't want to overuse because of the staining. My alternative would be to buy a few single brown pencils and stick to that, but I wanted to try out the watercolor pencils from Devent as well. I fancied this brand a while ago and it has really good reputation among doll artists online. So as an addition to my Faber Castell, I bought this mini set from Devent. This set was made especially for portraits, so it includes all kinds of brown, pink ochre and black and white. And if you looked carefully at my other pencils, you might have noticed that these are the colors I use the most, because I draw faces, <laughs> so I figured that buying some more of these wouldn't hurt. On paper they felt harder than the previous two brands, and my first impression from this set in general was not very good, because they didn't feel as pigmented as Faber-Castell. And when activated, the pigment was not spreading evenly and the brush was leaving strokes, which is not good for traditional painting. And maybe because it's a portrait set, there was some white present in some colors, probably to tone them down. As I said before, for doll art it's actually a good thing, because the lighter shades will have better coverage. The black pencil impressed me positively though, because the pigmentation was on par with Faber-Castell or even higher and it has a very beautiful cooler black shade to it. I think the set might be useful for sketching doll faces and adding some subtle skin texture and details, because the colors are muted and they are quite hard, which is good for fine lines. But if I could go back in time, I would not buy them and rather get two single pencils in brown shades I needed from Faber-Castell. Funny enough, this set hasn't got a cool brown shade I needed and I bought this set to have more shades of brown. Disadvantages of online shopping, I guess. <laughs> and in general, I felt like this set was not much better than the cheap pencils I bought from Castle Art, except for the black pencil, of course. That one was amazing. And this experience made me really nervous, because together with this set I bought one big expensive set of pencils from Devent, and I was like, oh no, what if it's bad? <laughs> I only have two kidneys, I can't afford wasting money on bad pencils. A little spoiler, I worried for nothing, these pencils are amazing and even better than I expected. And I think it would be appropriate to use this moment to thank my sweet supporters from Buy Me A Coffee. Thanks to them, I still have both of my kidneys and the pencils I kept in my shopping cart for the whole year. Thank you so much for supporting me and my art. What is so special about these pencils that I wanted them so much is that they are not based on watercolor but ink, which is supposed to make them way more pigmented. And also, some sources online claim that after you activate them with water and let dry, they become permanent and you can use them to paint on fabric. We will test it as well and see if it's true or not. My only concern was that if they are really ink based, they could stain the vinyl, so we need to test it today as well. But let's start with the traditional paper test. The first thing I did is of course try to sharpen them with a sharpener and what I noticed is that the pencils were not breaking and the wood had even density and slightly softer than the portrait pencils I tested. 
I'm pretty sure that they used different kind of wood here because I smelled it. <laughs> yes, I like to smell things and I think the portrait pencils smelled like pine and the ink tense pencils did not have any specific smell, just wood. I'm not the only one weirdo who is so obsessed with smells, am I? <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you do that too. On paper they felt slightly harder than Faber Castell and Kind Dash Super Color and they felt like they are not giving the pigment as easily. And then the black suddenly felt much softer and I was like, nani? <laughs> it looks just like a normal grey pencil. It turned out that it actually was a normal grey pencil, <laughs> lol. Let's check out the pigmentation. And it's crazy, look how far I can stretch out the swatches without the color fading away. And yes, the grey pencil is really just a normal grey pencil. <laughs> you know how in pencil sets they usually put black pencil in the end. In this set they put the actual black pencil closer to the middle and I didn't see it at first. You know, my heart is not strong enough to play me like that. <laughs> Jesus. Also, I don't understand what was the need to put a normal pencil in this set other than cutting costs, but I don't really care as long as they put enough brown pencils in here and in general it's a pretty well balanced selection of colors. I'm really happy with it. To be honest, I feel like every pencil in this set was a good choice of color to include. And as I promised, now we will test all of these brands on the doll next to each other. I think it will make the most sense to test the light colors on the black doll and dark colors on the white to be able to judge the coverage. At first I tried to draw just one line with every pencil. This experiment also showed that the yellow pencil from Karandash Supercolor has white in it, because the yellow looks more like pastel yellow. It has the best coverage, but you won't be able to get the primary yellow color out of it. If you want your doll's eyes, for example, to look actually yellow, it's better to take pencils from another brand and first apply white, seal it, and then add a layer of yellow on top. And it looked like the white watercolor pencil from Devent did just as good as Karandash Supercolor. I would even say that Devent works the best for thin lines because it is harder and yet gives the pigment easily. I was positively surprised by this one. But when I tried to add some more color with every pencil, it showed that the white from Karandash Supercolor is still the best for filling up bigger areas and Devent is the second best. What is interesting, from the first glance it looks like the cheap pencils from Castle Arts also did pretty good, but there's a little nuance. The coverage is not even. If you look at it carefully, you may notice that it looks more like a bunch of little dots and to make it work you would still need to add some more layers. So I would rather use more transparent pencils, but with even coverage because it's more predictable and the gradients will look smoother. Next I would like to do the same thing but with blue and black pencils on the light skin tone. Here my goal was to not only check out the coverage, but also see if some of them will stay in the vinyl. And from drawing just one line, I like the result from Javent Intense the most, because the line looked super thin and deep black just from one layer. I think it will be perfect for drawing eyelashes. And then I sharpened Karandar super color and tried to draw a line with it again to make it fair and it didn't really help because the pencil is too soft. And next I add some more color to test the coverage.
Javent Ink Tense surprised me once again. Just look how saturated both black and blue pencils are just in one layer and how smooth it is. My second favorites are Javent Watercolor and Faber Castell. I think they both are equally good. And then I also activated them with water to see if it will affect the staining as well. A few days later I tried to remove everything with just water first and of course the more pigmented pencils were harder to remove. And then I used acetone to see where pigment was able to go through the sealant as well. And despite my fears, the ink-based pencils did not leave any stains on the doll itself, which made them my personal winners in almost every test I did. And Karen Dash Supercolor is the only pencil that left a stain, but I already knew that it would. And at last I'd like to check that information I saw on the internet and see if I can use ink-based pencils to paint on fabric. For this purpose I took some cotton fabric, because cotton and viscose absorb pigments the best, and fixed it on the ring to make application more comfortable. Then I scratched some pigment off the pencils and mixed it with water to turn it into paint. I believe in general that art should not be limited and people should always try different things to explore and express themselves. And if you already have one medium, why not to experiment the shit out of it? I tried to apply it on dry fabric and see if I can blend colors and they seem to not blend well. And afterwards I tried to apply pigment on wet fabric and see if I can make gradients. And at last I added some dots as well to see if I can draw small patterns. After the fabric dried, I ironed it to fix the pigments and then tried to wash them off in clean water. And they stayed. I don't think I would use them to draw any patterns on fabric because the application is a bit weird and uneven, but I think these pencils really can be used for adding some effects on natural fabrics, like stains and weathering. For example, if I wanted to make Emily from Corpse Bride, I would probably use this technique instead of pastels, because pastels are not permanent on fabrics and can rub off on other dolls from your collection and ruin their outfits. Anyway, with this video I wanted to help you get some understanding of the medium so that you could make your own choice and see for yourself what is good for you and why is it good for you. I showed you a few brands and all of them had their pros and cons and I'm afraid that some people could get even more confused. So if you are a beginner, I would advise you to buy a middle sized set of pencils from Fabric Castell because they have the best value for money. And if you do doll art, buy one white pencil from Karandash Supercolor additionally for drawing eyes. It is not necessary, but will make your life way easier. And maybe one black Derwent Ink Tense pencil for eyelashes. Luckily, in art stores it is also possible to buy single pencils as well. You don't need to buy pencils in wooden boxes. I, for example, prefer to keep them in a cup anyway, because it takes less space on the table and makes it easier to keep my working space in order. And I definitely don't advise buying these huge sets of pencils, because they repeat many colors and you won't use most of them anyway. 
Even if you look at my main set of pencils, you will see that the most used pencils are white, black, all shades of brown and some red. So it would be way more efficient to buy a medium set and then buy some singles additionally if you feel like you need them over time. I really like these pencils from Deviant Ink Tents, but they are expensive and I think such a big investment is not necessary for a beginner artist. And if you use them for painting, such a big amount of pigment might be difficult to handle. If you draw on paper, there is no undo button, so it's easier to not risk it and add layers if you need more pigment. If they are useful for you personally will also depend on your art style. For example, if you prefer more graphic face-ups, you might like these pencils from the event, but if you prefer softer and more realistic faces, Faber-Castell will be a better choice, because they are softer and a bit less pigmented, which makes it easier to draw gradients and work in layers. Working in layers also leaves more room for mistakes, which is important in doll art. If you use watercolor pencils in your art, please tell me in the comments what do you think about them, which brand do you prefer and why. Share your thoughts in the comments section and if you liked this video and it was helpful, don't forget to click the like button. It will help my channel grow and show me if you are interested in seeing more technical videos like this one from time to time. If you like, you can also support my channel further by buying me a coffee. All of the links you can find in the description box. For every 100 coffees I reach, I'll make a giveaway and the winner will get a custom doll commission. Each coffee equals one entry. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye!